What's going on, everybody? Lil Chris here, and welcome back to another pool coaching lesson. For those that might be new to my channel, what I like to do with these videos is that pool players will send me videos of themselves playing through a couple of racks of eight ball. I'll commentate through each of the racks of what I think the player might be doing or what I think they should be doing. But at the end of each rack, I'll go back to what I think are key areas where I hopefully can offer some type of advice that can help improve the player's game. And in today's video, I'd like you to meet Tristan. Now, Tristan is a young player that also comes to us from South Africa, just like Tien's, whose video I reviewed back in January where he played through three racks of black ball. But what Tristan is going to do for us today is play through two racks of eight ball. So let's see what we can do to help him out. All right, Tristan, let's see what you got with your first rack. All right, pretty good break there. I like how you got the white to stop right in the middle of the table. Couldn't really get much of a spread outside of the eight ball as you got that really nasty clutter with both solids and stripes. You did make a stripe in the side pocket, but I'm not entirely sure what rules you're going to be playing by just yet. So let's see what your opening shot's going to be. Okay, that looked like it was the five ball, so you're playing an open table after the break, so now you're solids. And the first thing I'm already going to comment on is how hard you're actually hitting the balls. Ooh, really good attempt with a 1-3 combination, but that's the danger of those rounded pockets. you got to be very, very accurate because you can't really just jaw the ball in because it'll just bobble its way back out. So now you're going to go to stripes, and I just saw you do a double the distance measuring to try to kick into the rail and make that stripe. Really nice shot. Looks like we got position here for the 13 ball. Oh, and that's the rounded pockets for you. So back over to solids. Now, I like the choice of this shot here. And not a bad breakout. It looks like that two ball might be able to go to the bottom left if you can get position on it. Hey, good shot on the three. Bit unfortunate to push the one ball away like that, though. And then we overcut the one ball. So back over to stripes. Now that was interesting. I'd be curious to ask you, what were you intending on doing there? Were you trying to get position on this ball, or were you trying to... Maybe separate uh, the other two stripes that are up there. Ooh. And for those that are watching, that's the dangers of those rounded pockets there. Typically, if you just shoot straight into them, they don't really just bounce the ball into the pocket. They can actually just bounce the ball straight back. Almost got lucky making the uh, one in the side after rattling it in the corner. Okay, now that was one of your more softer shots that I've seen during this rack here, so I'd be curious as to why on all of the other shots you're shooting as hard as you are. Like that, that was a nice soft shot there. Got the two ball now to go to the bottom left corner pocket. Nice shot there. And it looks like maybe you can try to do the eight in the side. Oh, but you overcut the ball. Okay, so can we clean up his stripes? Ooh, 
looks like he hit that one too hard. I don't think you need to set up for a bank shot like that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> How did the eight ball not go in? But there we go. We at least finished the first rack off as the solid player, which was player one when you broke and made a stripe on the break, but you chose solids right after the break. So the first thing I'm going to ask is what makes you feel the need to hit the balls as hard as you did during the course of this rack? There was only literally a handful of shots where I saw you shoot softer and smoother, but all of the other shots, it really looked like you were just forcing the balls in and forcing the cue ball around. If you've seen any of my other pool coaching lesson videos or have seen any of my live streams, you'll know that I'm more of a finesse player, which is where my comment is essentially coming from. Now, if you feel that you're actually having to hit that hard due to the equipment that you're actually using to make this video, completely understandable. But then I would still stress the idea that it looked like on the majority of the shots, we weren't sure where the cue ball was going to be going to for us to play position on unless we were shooting softly. So I would always advise that you try to shoot softer, learn where the cue ball goes so that way you can plan some type of a run out. That's at least a summary of what I'm going to give you with this rack here. And there are some specific spots that I actually want to go more in detail on. So here's the first spot I'd like to comment on. This is the opening shot after the break where you're about to shoot the five ball into the corner pocket and you have bottom spin on this cue ball to pull it back towards the middle of the table. But what I want you to pay attention to is your final stroke when you actually hit the cue ball. I'm going to play this very slowly as you pull the cue back and when you accelerate forward, you accelerate at such a rate to where right here we can see that you have picked your cue up off of your bridge hand. And any time I see movement like this during a shot, I always want to ask, when do you feel that you're actually picking up your cue? Are you doing it before you strike the cue ball, during striking the cue ball, or after striking the cue ball? Now, with this shot here, it did appear you did it well after hitting the cue ball, which means there's nothing really wrong. There's going to be no effect because... Had you done it before striking the cue ball or during striking the cue ball, that's where you can run into some issues. If you're putting bottom spin on the cue ball and you move your cue before you strike it, then more than likely, or in this case here, when you pick up your cue before striking the cue ball, then more than likely you're not going to hit as low on the cue ball as you would like. And if you end up trying to move the cue during hitting the cue ball, then you're most likely going to miss cue. So here in this instance, since you did it well after you struck the cue ball, there's not really any consequence. I would just prefer rather to not see it at all because if you're doing it like this now, then you're leaving windows of opportunity for it to happen during striking the cue ball, let alone before striking the cue ball. Here's the next spot I'd like to comment on. You're now shooting as stripes and you're about to shoot what appears to be the 13 ball into this corner pocket here. You end up overcutting it a little bit and causing it to run right into the jaw of the pocket. And because of the rounded pockets, it ends up bobbling its way out while your cue ball does something like this. It comes over to the short rail and you must have had some amount of left spin on the cue ball as your cue ball comes over to the side rail and goes behind the seven and then lands somewhere over here. Now, because of the route of the cue ball, I can only think that you were trying to get position on this ball here, which appears to be the 15 ball. If that is true, I would have to ask, what do you plan on doing with these stripes here that are tied up next to the two and the eight? This appears to be the 10 ball, the nine ball, and I think that's the 11 ball. I'm not entirely sure. Were you planning on maybe trying to get position like this? So that way you can try to shoot this ball into this corner pocket and with top spin, you'd have to push the cue ball to the shore rail and then come back out like this to maybe try to break them out. If so, that's all well and good, provided that you actually execute it correctly at the crucial moment, because there's no other way to break these balls out if you fail to do so. Which is why I would probably suggest that you try shooting this ball now. I know it's a thin cut shot, but it should be makeable. You play the ball into the corner pocket, and the cue ball is naturally going to come off of the side rail, and you can put probably just a touch of, I think it's left spin to spin the cue ball over here and then try to break your three stripes out. Are you guaranteed a shot at any of these three stripes? 
Not really, unless you are fully aware of how the clutter is going to behave once you run into them, especially if you run into them at a particular point. Like if you run into the 10 ball, you can see that the 10 ball will push the 8, and the 8 will push these two stripes out into the open. The 10 ball, after hitting the 8, will probably run into the 2, and the 2 gets pushed over here. So more than likely, you might have a shot at this 9 ball right here. Can't really tell unless you actually tried it. On the other hand, if this shot is not makeable, then what I actually would suggest, if you have to play this ball first, is that you just play it in. Don't try to move the cue ball. Have the cue ball come off the short rail like it did with no side spin and come back out to where the shot is still cuttable the same exact way as I said, so that way you can still do this exact natural route rather than trying to force the cue ball up to the short rail and then break this out if that was your actual plan. This kind of movement here is smaller, therefore easier to control, giving you a higher chance at being successful. But more times than not, the whole idea is to make sure that you're still able to run the table by dealing with this clutter that you have as soon as possible. So that's why if this shot was makeable at this point in time, that's why I would suggest that you shoot it now rather than after the 13 ball. At this spot here, you're back at shooting stripes and you're about to try to shoot the nine ball into the side pocket. And we can see that you're trying to predict where the cue ball is going to go by using Dr. Dave's 30 degree peace sign rule. But I don't think you're actually using it correctly here because you're trying to use your index finger to point through the object ball on the path that it's supposed to take towards the side pocket. And you think that your middle finger is gonna show you where the cue ball is going to take from that path when in fact your index finger should be pointing on the path the cue ball is taking on the way to the nine ball, which would look something like this, while your middle finger points in the 30 degree direction from the center of the ghost ball in the direction that the cue ball will actually take, which looks something like this, which is pretty much what your cue ball actually did do when you take this shot. But then I have to ask, regardless of which path that you take here or which one you thought that was correct, what were you planning on doing if your cue ball lands somewhere over here? Because the only ball that you're going to see is what appears to be this 12 ball, and you'd have to do a three ball combination to try to make maybe one of these two stripes here. Or were you trying to roll far enough to where you can see this ball here and maybe try to play it into the corner pocket? I can't really tell, which is probably why I would at least suggest maybe just playing this nine ball shot with some bottom spin so you can draw underneath the 30 degree like this and then maybe get position for this ball here and then play position for this ball next. Still eventually having to deal with this ball that's tied up with the eight ball. But the main point of this comment here is to point out that I think you're not using the 30 degree P sign rule correctly. And this will be the final spot in the rack that I'm going to comment on. You're now trying to finish the table as stripes as you almost finish the table as solids you just ended up missing the eight ball when you were trying to play it here into the side pocket. You're now into a two ball run at what would be a five ball run if you were able to complete the table. And on the third ball, you're gonna try to shoot the 11 ball here into the corner pocket and you made it. I just think you hit the cue ball a little too hard as it comes off of the short rail and heads up over here to where you end up having to try to bank the 12 into the cross side pocket. You just ended up banking the 12 ball short and then it almost knocked the eight ball into the side pocket to which you would have lost as stripes. But since you missed, you had a free shot at the eight ball still sitting in the same side pocket and you ended the table as solids. So the reason for my comments here is the same comment that I said before I started reviewing specific spots of the rack where I said how the majority of your shots on this rack here you ended up hitting them way too hard in my opinion because all it would appear you had to do here was just make the ball. The cue ball naturally comes off of the short rail and then just parks itself right here, very little movement, and then you can just try to make the 12 ball down here into this corner pocket. I understand that you have rounded pockets, so it's probably going to be a little bit harder to make this shot as you have to be more accurate, but I think this is something that you can handle considering the shots that you did make during the course of this rack. Because once you make the 12 ball down here, then you have the easy eight ball just sitting next to the side pocket. Overall, it's still just going to be this whole idea about even with the equipment here, 
I don't think you have to hit the ball as hard as you did on most of the shots that you did. Because on all of the shots that I thought that you hit hard, you ended up with a cue ball position that I don't think you accurately predicted. You just ended up having a shot that you could still continue to go for. Now, I'm not saying that on every single solitary shot. I'm pretty sure you at least had some idea of where the cue ball was going to go on the majority of the shots. But when you saw where you were hitting a ball really hard, the cue ball would slam into another ball and end up in an arbitrary spot. And then you ended up shooting a shot. If you were able to shoot smoother, let alone softer, like you did on some of the other shots, you knew exactly where the cue ball was going to go, except for the incorrect use of the 30 degree P sign rule. That allowed you to at least be more accurate which is pretty much what I'm going to cover on the majority of this rack here. So this is all I have for you on rack one. Now let's take a look at rack two. So here we are with rack two. You did a really good job in rack one, finishing it off in four innings. Let's see what you can do with this rack. Ooh, we almost got the head ball to go into the side pocket again. Didn't quite have as much control on the white as you did in the first rack, though you did get a better spread off of the break. We don't have that clutter near the middle of the table around the eight ball, though we do have two stripes cluttered up next to the side rail. So that was player one that broke dry because you won the first rack as player one. So let's see what player two's opening shot is going to be. A really good shot on the six ball, a lot softer, smoother, and in more control. It looks like you at least got decent position on the two ball, which I saw you were gesturing earlier is what you wanted. But to me, it looks like you might have slightly overran it since you now have to back cut it into the side pocket. And it looks like you might have overcut it. You were blocking the camera, so I couldn't really see. Though I do see that the seven ball is in a different spot, so the two ball must have caromed off of the seven ball that actually caused you to miss. So you actually didn't cut it enough. But now back over to player one with stripes. It looks like you're measuring for a kick shot. You've got three stripes near you that you can actually hit to play some sort of a defensive shot. Though you are playing by yourself, so playing defensive on yourself is probably not even crossing your mind. We do end up fouling since you hit the solid, so you'll be taking ball in hand. Now, I like going for the three ball since the two stripes are actually blocking it there. But that one you hit kind of hard, and you kind of rush that one there. Take your time. So back over to stripes. A good shot there. It looks like maybe you were trying to break up those two stripes on the side rail, so that was a good try. Eh, I think that was a foul. I think you hit the three ball first before you hit what appeared to be the 15 ball. But you're not taking ball in hand, so I'm guessing to you it looked like it was a good shot. Nine ball into the top left. It looks like you were trying to break the stripes out again. So that's actually really good that you're trying to at least improve the position of the two stripes there. Though you are running out of chances. So I'm curious as to what you're going to do with them when you get to them. This little power draw shot to get position on this ball here. Because after you make this ball, what do you do now? Good shot. Yeah, what do you really do now? Oh, look at that. But where's the cue ball? Oh, no, he ends up scratching. Wow, that was at least a creative shot there. So ball in hand is player two. I, I don't necessarily agree with that. You had the three ball right next to the seven ball that you could have played position for. Nothing wrong with playing the two the way you did, though. That was a really nice stun run-through shot on the four. Good follow shot to get position on the one. Try to play the one in the top left. 
Oh, but you overcut the ball. Now that looked like a rushed shot. I mean, you took some time to try to measure out a one rail kick shot earlier, so I would at least expect you to try to at least measure a bank shot as well. What are we doing? Are we about to mass A this? Oh, God, Lee, that's two good shots that you made and end up scratching afterwards. Wow. All right, so is player one with stripes. Can we clean this up? Get decent position on the eight for the top left. But we overcut the ball. Or actually, that was an undercut. I'm sorry. And that was an undercut. It looks like you might be done with this rack. This is frustration playing here. Ah, but there we go. We at least finished the rack off there. So this one here gave you more trouble than the first rack. You finished the first rack in four innings, and I think in this one you finished it off in five for a total of nine. So we do have a couple of spots that I'd like to talk about on this rack. Let's go back and take a look at them. Here's the first spot in this rack that I'd like to comment on. This is just after fouling when you tried to one rail kick at this ball here as player one. Now as player two, you have ball in hand and you're about to try to shoot the three ball into this corner pocket here. You just end up overcutting the ball and causing the three ball to hit the side rail here due to I think you just rushed the shot and didn't really give it the respect that it deserves. You heard me say during the playthrough of this rack that I liked how you chose the three ball because it's in a difficult position because it's blocked by these two stripes here to go into this corner pocket and it's blocked by your own ball here to go into this corner pocket. So it does have access to this pocket and this pocket, though I don't think I would have chosen this pocket and here's why. You also have this seven ball that's in a bit of a tricky spot. It's very difficult for me to tell whether or not if it can go into this side pocket here, especially since you have rounded pockets, which is probably why I would suggest playing the three ball down into this corner pocket by placing the cue ball somewhere right around here. Not exactly straight in, but in some sort of an angle to where you can play this ball here with some topspin on the cue ball and try to get the cue ball to come and push the seven ball into a better position, perhaps into the rail and then come out to where it's makeable now to go into the side pocket, because then you can proceed with a run. If you are successful with a shot like this, you can play the seven into the side, get position on the two and play the two in the side, and then try to figure out how you're gonna get for the four, the five and the one in order to finish the rack. The idea for this kind of shot here is to deal with your troubled balls. With ball in hand, you're attempting to deal with one of them, but also with ball in hand, you can attempt to deal with another one at the same time rather than doing it later. At this spot here, you now have ball in hand as player two because you made a really cool bank, carom, something or the other where you had a ball over here and you managed to get it to go into this side pocket here, but then your cue ball scratched in the bottom left. So now as player two with ball in hand, you elect to start with the seven ball to go here into the side pocket and you drew the cue ball over to here for position on the two. Now you had already heard me say that I don't agree with that type of play when you had this ball here that you could have played position on. You end up shooting this ball into this corner pocket, play this ball into this corner pocket, and then use the two ball to get back up here for these two. Now you still managed to get up here for these two over here because your cue ball was somewhere right around here and then you ended up overcutting the one ball into this corner pocket. Now that's one alternative that you could have had, but since you had ball in hand, another alternative that I would consider would be to start with these two balls up here and then use these last four balls to transition into the eight to go into either of the corner pockets. So this is probably where I'm going to call in for the viewers to give us any type of run out patterns that you can think of, because this is one that I'm going to suggest. I would probably start with this ball here. I think this is the five ball. You can place the cue ball anywhere you want to where you can make it into this corner pocket and you'd want to get position on the one ball coming off of the short rail, whether you can land here or here, I think is not really relevant because as long as you can make the one ball into the corner pocket without overcutting it or bobbling it into the rounded pockets, because you want to try to get the cue ball to come over here to the side rail and then back out over here 
pretty much for the type of position that you have for the seven ball. Because then you can still play almost the same exact pattern that I previously mentioned. Play the seven ball into the side pocket, get position for the three, play the three into this corner pocket here, which is probably a bit of a stop shot. Play the four ball into this corner pocket and allow the cue ball to roll forward so that you can get position on the two to cut it into the side pocket and then have automatic position for the eight and you are done as player two. Now, as I said before, this is not the only run out pattern. You can certainly decide for another one that you could have done. You almost had a successful run out pattern had you made the one ball. But I think this, at least here, is easier because there's no real reason to start at this end of the table only to transition up to this half of the table and then possibly have to transition underneath the eight ball to play it into either of these corner pockets because of the type of angles that you had on the one ball and the type of angle you would have had on the five ball had you had made it. Pretty much after you take these two balls out here, you can almost transition to either the seven ball, the four ball, or the, I'm sorry, this is the three ball, the four ball, or the seven ball. I don't think it would be smart to try to transition to the two from either of these. And that's why I think that you have a plentiful of options that you could have started with, but at the very least, start with either the one ball or the five ball. And this is going to be the final spot in the rack that I'm going to comment on. You're now back at the table as player two because you just tried banking this 12 ball, which was somewhere right around here while your cue ball was here, into the cross side pocket. You just ended up banking it wide and the 12 ball comes down to the side rail and then lands over here while the cue ball flares around three rails and ends up over here. Now it appears that you're going to masse around the eight ball in order to make this one ball into the corner pocket, even though you have an open five ball here that you can either maybe try to cut into the corner pocket or possibly bank it down table here into this corner pocket, leaving your cue ball up here possibly for position on the one and being safe from the 12 ball. Now, having said all that, if you are dead set on trying to make this one ball, don't really think that the mass a shot is the best option you could have tried. You made the ball, you just ended up scratching, which is the highest risk that you can have here with the mass a shot, unless you're able to clip the one ball in, which is probably what you really wanted to try to do. Have the one ball go in so that way the cue ball can come off of the short rail and then back out for position on the five. Though trying to clip into the one ball from a mass a shot is much more difficult than what I'm going to suggest and that is a one rail kick shot into the one ball. Clearly, if you're going to do a one rail kick shot, you do not want to kick the one ball straight in the face because then just like with your mass A shot, the cue ball is just going to follow the one ball into the corner pocket. So that's where you have a few margins of error on this shot here. You can either try to kick slightly short, so that way you can just clip the one ball on this side, the one ball goes in, the cue ball comes off of the side rail and back out for position on the five, or you can try to kick a little long, catch the short rail, and then back cut the one ball in and pretty much almost end up with the same kind of cut angle that you would have on the five ball. This, at least here, allows you more options to be successful at making the one ball plus getting position on the five rather than trying to accurately masse the cue ball around the eight ball in order to make the one ball. But like I said, if I really wanted to give you advice on this shot here, it would probably be to do something with the five ball because it has better options for you to be in control and play safe at the same time from the 12 ball. So Tristan, this is what I have for you after watching these two racks of eight ball. You were able to finish everything off in a total of nine innings, which I think is really good. And if I were to try to rate you in our APA system here that we have in the United States based on what I just saw, I would probably put you somewhere around a four. You have a really solid game and you're able to make some really good shots. But as I said, throughout the racks, I think you're playing just a tad bit too fast with not enough planning and you're hitting that cue ball just a little too hard to the point to where you are transitioning from one hard shot after another and then you're bound to miss. I would rather see you slow down, observe the entire table before you choose a shot so that way, hopefully, you can choose the shot that has the easier transition to execute with smoother, softer hits. So I can only hope that the comments that I was able to provide to you in this video here show you that, and you're able to apply it to your game, and of course, have your game improve from here. So viewers, what do you think of that assessment?
Do you agree or disagree with any of my points? And if you feel there's any other type of advice that you'd like to give Tristan that I may have overlooked, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below with the timestamp of where the advice would begin and the advice that you'd want to give. Now, that pretty much is going to wrap up all the videos that I have to review by myself. I still have quite a few of videos to review with Nate and Demetrius, so I'm hoping that we're going to get those knocked out here soon. But in the meantime, I'm still no longer going to be accepting any new submissions of videos to review. Instead, however, I've created a Facebook group, and a link to that group can be found in the description box below. And feel free to join that group so that you can submit any video that you'd want of you playing any game that you want. 8-ball, 9-ball, 10-ball, straight pool, it really doesn't matter. Because the point of that group is for the members, including myself, to give you some type of advice that can help improve your game. And then every once in a while, I'll still grab one of those videos off of that Facebook group and then still make a video just like this. So I hope to see everybody over there in that Facebook group. And as always, if you like what you saw, please give this video a thumbs up. Maybe consider sharing it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to click the bell icon to be notified whenever I go live or publish a new video. Take care, everybody.